For me, I think uh, one of the biggest persons in my life that really helped me adapt to both faith and sports was my oldest brother, Jake. He also was probably my spiritual father. So when I started playing sports in my teen years, as I said, where it was going against the grain of my parents, he was the first one that came along my side and said that, no, no, God gives us gifts and passions. Uh, the key is not to separate them as what we're having a, a discussion here this morning. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So he says, George, I see you, you know, running out there in the, on the baseball fields. He goes, it's the one place you are probably most natural. You're so almost like a kid. You can be a kid out on the field. And he goes, I don't see you that happy anywhere else. And he goes, so why would you think God would give you that kind of passion if, you know, to then have to hide it or put it away? So he goes, but the other thing is you also have such a, a passion for the Lord. So he goes, why do you have to separate them? So Jake played with me and he was kind of our coach initially in the church league. So he says, go out and play and play as hard as you can. In other words, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. But he goes, look again, you know, we talked about the vision before like Gretzky. He goes, look out here. He goes, you're playing against other churches. You have pastors and other people out here, but you also have hurting kids and boys out there. He goes, make it an effort. Let's start practicing the faith element out on the field. He goes, today, pick one guy from the other team that you would not go talk about double play or out or strike out or home run but make a personal connection with that person, just one. And as, as uncomfortable it was, it started and it became, that was my new element of the game. And over the years we played, I got to know at least one person from every single team to the point where I knew most people and sometimes I knew the other team better than some of the guys on my own team. And again, it's something that was just really good. So Jake really helped me combine those two and it was just a, a huge aspect of, again, uniting the two. The other one, ironically, was is now I had you know, family saying that. Not only did he help me, but the other brothers really helped me get humble as well. Being the second youngest and thinking I'm better, they, they pointed it out. They could definitely see the warts and beyond and help keep the pride down as much as they could, even though I got prideful at times. Then years ago, then I played at Faith Mennonite for the time. I left the family team, which, trust me, was not easy. My, my family did not let me forget that too easy, that I would choose another church over family, that blood was thicker than water and all this. But I got an, an awesome opportunity to play with uh, the current pastor at the time was Glenn Brubaker. He was 65 years old, and I, I couldn't believe that he was going to join the softball team. So here comes this 65-year-old man up to the plate in his jeans, bat on a thing, and you could just hear the defenders, hey, move in, move in, look, look who's up, look who's up. He, he would do nothing. He'd wait, take a strike. All of a sudden, he'd take one hit it way over the outfield and just smile and a little jog over to second. And just smile. And he goes, you know, he comes back and he goes, I used to, that used to be a home run, but, you know, it's good. <laughs> I'm like, all right, well, this is good. So here's a pastor who I loved and respect. He could play ball, and it just really affirmed what Jake and others were t telling me over these years. So, again, I would really encourage pastors, leaders in church, uh, find those athletes in your church and talk to them because I, I bet you there's a lot of them too that they feel guilty that they can't do one or the other. So having a lead pastor do that was great. Now talk about, he actually helped me become a much better softball player. I remember playing at UMI of all places. I was playing short top, shortstop, he's at first base. I make a diving catch, get off on my knees. I didn't have time to stand up. I throw one, a nice one hopper to first base. Glenn reaches over being 65, couldn't get the glove right to the ground. It went through, <sighs> big sigh, I'm thinking. Mm. Yeah, sure enough, we got the next out, get off. Glenn comes out to me, he goes, you know what, George? That was almost a great play. <laughs> My instinct was going to tell me it would have been if he could have just bent down and picked up the ball. But it really did hit home. He goes, why would you rush it so much? Take the time, make the play, focus, make the throw. It, it's everything. You need to make sure you do it well. And it did, you know, that was a thing I took to practice. Okay, so if, if it's worth diving for, it still isn't a good play if I can't take the time to make the throw. So a pastor is the one that really was probably one of my best athletic coaches, and it's really come into play in almost every sport I've played today.